<laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's go to share your screen. Go live. You got that? I got video. I picked a new uh, PowerPoint template uh, this week. I think it looks very nice. And then uh, the, the screenshot here was posted uh, by Klepto last week. This is uh, his uh, some new fog he's working on. It looks very nice. And I thought it felt it, uh, it fit the uh, PowerPoint uh, theme very nicely. So, all right. <clears throat> so last week, uh, okay, on, on Saturday, Last week I was talking a lot about uh, terrain mesh layers, and I was saying like the variations feature was the was kind of the last thing I wanted to get done with. That was like the last big thing, and I actually did get that working on Saturday. Um, this is a little bit complicated because what you do is you create a mesh uh, mesh layer for the terrain, and then you can also add variations to it. So you can have different models. You can, you can set up like a layer of trees, but you can also insert like extra trees, different versions. You can um, insert rocks, whatever. And what it does is it creates all these different objects that are evenly distributed across the terrain with the same settings, but they also have like some like repulsion from each other. So you don't get things like two trees growing together. Um, and this is this was a little bit complicated because uh, it involves uh, each variation has a probability, and the GPU selects uh, the variation, and then it kind of dynamically um, creates these uh, rendering commands, these indirect rendering commands in a compute shader. And it's it was a little bit tricky to like I had to draw on paper like the layout of the buffers until I got it right. Uh, but once I got it working, it was working like perfectly and I tested it very, uh, very thoroughly and, um, very happy with that because that was like, that was really the last, um, the last big thing I had to, that's, that's really left, like the last big, uh, technology hurdle. Um, so that week, two weeks ago, I had to spend like, I had to just spend like that time, like pretty much like, uh, just like blocking everything out. Um, of of my focus and just focusing really intensely on that one one issue, um, but I don't think I'm actually going to have to. I mean, I don't think there's anything more like that to do until a 1.0. Not nothing uh, that requires that intense uh, concentration. Um, after that, I started uh, messing around with the. Uh, I started writing some more code with the uh, Asamp uh, FBX uh, importer that I was uh, experimenting with, and the. You can download my code uh, from on the programming forum uh, with the link below, and um, I was able to get FBX import and X file import um, working in a pretty short amount of time. Um, I do like the. API for um, the asset uh, library. Um, I th it maps very, very closely to how we, how we, uh, to our model structure. And I enjoyed working with it. Um, unfortunately, I found uh, FBX, uh, animated FBX files may have some problems using that library. Um, I did solve the uh, I did find the solution to the problem I was talking about with uh, that was creating extra bones. Um, there is a setting that you can use uh, to uh, to mitigate that problem, but reportedly there are other issues uh, with FBX import using Asimp. Um, apparently, uh, apparently the the Godot, Godot developers uh, stopped using this library because. Or else they maybe they branched it or something like they they gave up on it uh, because they were having problems with this, unfortunately. But um, I did leave my the last version of my model loading code in the programming forum, so you can download that and mess around with it. Maybe come up with a converter or something if you if you wish to. Um, I did add our FPX to MDL converter back into 
uh, the default install. Um, this is from Leadworks and it works extremely well. It's, um, we've actually like, I've never seen a problem with it in the last like four years. Um, so that is, that is there now. I also added a, uh, an extension, um, that in the default install to convert all image files to DDS. The, uh, the conversions are all uh, disabled by default now. Um, I'm going to go slowly with this and then maybe we'll uh, make it enabled by default uh, in a future version. I also started working with an experimental uh, new format. I said last week uh, that I was uh, thinking about creating our own file format for models. And at the time I couldn't, it was just kind of a feeling I had. I couldn't really say why. Um, but now I can tell you why now. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, uh, there were 18 bug fixes um, uh, last week. So pretty good week. Okay. Um, I think the we might need some uh, revisions in our asset pipeline. And uh, the reason for that is that FBX is not going away. FBX uh, still accounts for probably, I would guess, 80% of game models. If you buy some game models in, on Turbo Squid or something, uh, chances are they're going to be FBX. Uh, Facebook's GLTF to FBX converter doesn't work. I took a closer look at it uh, last week. Um, it uses absolute texture paths, which is, I, I don't know how anybody thought this was a good idea, but I think it should, I think it kind of demonstrates, um, that these big, uh, these big tech corporations are not full of smart people. They're full of mediocre programmers. Um, source code, uh, the source code for it no longer compiles. Um, I did find that Coco Cocos has an updated version, uh, that might work better. Um, so that's a possible option. Um, but, you know, if we're going from FBX to GLTF, it's like we have all the weird issues of FBX and we have all the weird issues of GLTF. Um, I'm looking at these, these interchange formats less as I'm not look, I'm looking at them as sort of like an unstable intermediate form of your data. Because once it's in in our file, if if everything's in the source file format like Blender or or Max, everything's fine. If everything's in our own file format, then everything's fine. Uh, it's just like when it exists in these intermediate formats, they're so uh, complicated and ambiguous that it is possible for things to go wrong. Um, just because you have a, an FBX file doesn't mean you have a working a working model. Um, and I can't really say that's not true. You know, if you have a, if you have a Leadworks model, it always works. It never doesn't work. You can load it and resave it a thousand times and it's always perfect because the format is unambiguous. Um, so I'm looking more at like an auto conversion kind of pipeline that similar to what Leadworks uh, does. Um, the difference here, and this was hard coded in Leadworks and it was very, uh, it was very, it was well defined, but it was also very inflexible. Um, in Ultra, I have it set up so all these converters are controlled in script. Uh, they can all be toggled on and off in the settings. And uh, if you don't like the way I have something set up, you can set something up, else up yourself. You can add a new converter. Um, it's quite, it's quite flexible. So. Uh, let's talk about the new model format version. Um, this is a fast loading binary format and it's got a lot of error check-ins. It includes a lot of like little tags in the data. So like when it starts a new um, entity in the hierarchy, it has to have four bytes there that spell the word node. And if it doesn't, it'll say, it'll print out an, a message saying error expecting expected node tag and it'll fail to load. And so that, um, I think that stuff is added in there just for the sake of making it easier to load the files and to write an exporter or an importer. 
Um, it supports skeletal animation, of course. Um, we talked about um, external mater material files uh, quite a lot. And I have the, the way this, as it stands right now, uh, this format does not support embedded materials or textures. It's just external material files only. Um, it does have support for vertex morphs. Even, even though the engine doesn't support it yet, and even though we don't really have any way of getting that data into this format yet, um, the support has been built into it. Um, and if, it's, if there's no vertex morphs, then it just basically it just means uh, there's an, a, a zero integer written. Um, it does support uh, embedded colliders. Uh, so the colli you, don't, you don't need a separate collider file. Um, it just gets saved into the model file. Um, it supports LOD. I forgot to put that on here. Um, it supports an embedded uh, pre-computed PIC acceleration structure. So when the engine loads a model, it has to basically, when it does a raycast against it, it basically has to compile like a BSB type structure. Um, the first time that that uh, raycast is, is performed on that model. And with this, we can just store that... Um, into the model format so it saves a little bit of loading time or you know you don't have a delay uh if you're doing a very big um uh if you're doing raycasting on a very big model and then uh the engine saves and loads this format um it's just save model load model and like i said it's perfectly stable so you can save it and reload it a thousand times and everything's fine so this is the current asset pipeline. It's you have your modeling program and then you export a GLTF. And then there's a final step because a GLTF is not really a game ready GLTF. You need a GLTF with DDS textures. So that's like another step that gets performed in the editor. And then we also you can also export an FBX file or more likely you just already have it because that's what you downloaded. Um, and then the FBX goes into GLTF, although we don't really have a good solution to this because the Facebook GLTF, the FBX to GLTF converter I've been using doesn't really work. And then after that, you would still have to open the GLTF and resave it with DDS textures, or we have that little right click extension that does that too without actually modifying the model. Um, that's this is how things are currently. This is how I'm looking to revise things. Um, where your modeling program can export GLTF or FBX. The the advantage of GLTF is it supports PBR materials, but um, only a minority of uh, models actually. That that will only really affect things if you have. Um, if you have roughness metalness maps, which the vast majority of, of 3D models do not. Um, and then it just could, gets converted into our own file format. That's more the, the uh, pipeline I'm looking at now. Of course, this is all um, set up in script. So if you don't like this, you can, you can do this or you can do whatever you want. Uh, but this is how I'm, this is kind of what I'm looking at uh, right now. And I think, uh, Let's see, who have we got here? Okay, Spider Pig is not here. He's sleeping because it's 3 a.m. in Australia. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's all I've got uh, to talk about. Uh, that's all my slides. Oh, and um, uh, I was gonna let him talk about it actually, um, but um, he did, uh, he, I believe he has a Blender exporter working for the f new format already, or pretty close to it. Nice. Um, so when the MDL or this new format gets in to, to the engine, um, so normally, like, I will only need to like re-export if I saw if I like. Or if the UV is wrong or like the miles like not loading animation correctly because something I did. Um, but so are they going to be like in the tools future? So 
once it's an MDL, I could pretty much do the things I would need to do, in, like to prevent re-importing pretty much. Like, is there going to be like a UV tool or a, or maybe a, even a UV <clears throat> extension that might use AI to like unwrap the model? Uh, unwrapping is a pretty complicated uh, subject. Um, I would I'd right, say like right. like applying like some uh, like cylindrical or box or planar planar uh, right. texture mapping. That's that would be. Uh, well, I'm just saying like if you can like fork X Atlas to read the MDL format and then have it saved back out as an MDL. Wait, you for, can for pretty what? much have. Um, X Atlas. Um, I don't know what that it's is. A, it's an open source UV unwrapper. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. I'll put it in. I'll put it in general so you can see it. I shared this before. Um, so I think right now this is not really useful. Like I want to use it, but it's not really useful because I think it only accepts, um, like P and like, uh, OBJs. Mm -hmm. So, or FBX. So I would have to like export it as an FBX and then like, or an OBJ. And then I would have to do the unwrapping and then I would have to put it back in like the modeling program and a lot of things um happen when you export the fbx like everything triangulates in blender or, like my things being quads it's just easier to edit in quads and then when it goes fbx it's kind of gets a little messy but if you can embed that um it's this whole so suite it's mit it's free and open source but if you can Im implement that into the engine where you have a model, you can just ask that tool to unwrap it for you. It's, I'll take it's a, a future. I'll take thing, a look dude. at it. Um, you probably, yeah. I mean, you probably want to be like, I mean, mm -hmm. I think we probably want to like do all of that in the modeling program, whatever it may be. And then, right. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying like, if you can, if you can fix one of the hardest things um, a modeler has to do, um, that would be a plus. Because right now the pipeline to that is kind of a little bit sticky. Because you have to import and export. And if you can just say oh, export as MDL and then the engine or where to plug in can unwrap it. It's still an MDL. Now it's unwrapped. Do you think unwrapping is really something that can ju that can be like automated? Um, not a hundred percent. There's always going to be something. I mean, as yeah, I don't think X Atlas uses AI, but like with AI tools, you could probably it'll probably get really good. But there's always going to be that case where something's really complicated that doesn't even know like where to start, but. Mm -hmm. But but I know I realized that unwrapping for like hand painting can be very different for unwrapping for substance painting, like going to substance painter and painting it in, because it doesn't really matter how things are really laid out. What really matters is the the proportions of each UV and how it like relates to each other. Because you know, it's kind of difficult. Like really, like I can't hand paint something that was that's made to be going to substance painter. Right. Cause and I'm guessing the are, triangles are just like randomly distributed across. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like in my models, I have like, they each like sections like, okay, this I want by like what color I want or what kind of material I, I want each piece to be. So I have like a white metal on this part of the sheet. I'll have a dark metal on this part of the sheet. I was like, okay, well this is going to be my mission stuff. So this is going to be in this corner. But with a normal model, um, it's usually kind of all over the place. Let's take a look. 
Yeah, I mean, it probably sounds like this falls within the scope of like the modeling program, which is something I generally like. I consider that to be outside the scope of. Oh, it's a library, huh? Yeah, so I thought it was a program. It it it, it is and is like there's a program version, but it's a library. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, this looks interesting, actually. It was safe. It was make everyone's lives better, especially mine, because I hate UV wrapping. You'd rather you'd rather use this than like Blender or. Um, it, it, well, blend, with blending on wrapping, you have to, it's an art, and sometimes you just want to model something, and, or model something real quick, like, if it's, like, a, gar, a junk prop, or a, or, like, a bench, or something, you like, mm -hmm. low priority, you just want something, you just want you UV'd, you don't want to spend, like, an hour. Oh, and you want to, what you want to do, is you want to model it. And then get it into mm -hmm. into our format and start using it, and then go back later, and then add the texture after you've been using it yeah, for a have while. It. Yeah, like that. That or, yeah, that, or, or, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, or like I, yeah, because I hate reimporting models, especially if it has like animations, and if this new model format supports. Um, cutting up animations into their own sequences, that's going to be a pain when if you like notice like you didn't UV something correctly or so. Right. Um, I, I also post something for UV and wrapping in this channel here in this text channel from the voice. I think this is also if you can spend, I, I think it's $10 or $15 a month. This is basically the complete industry standard. Every big company is using this. Yeah, but can you integrate it with the engine? I think this uses AI. No, no, it's not using AI. It can use AI. It has an AI features. Hmm. So this also generates some UV maps. And also um, what might be interesting in the engine is uh, UDEMs. What's that? So you can have uh, UDEMs are basically multiple UV maps. So you can, yeah, have multiple maps for, for, for your textures. Why would you want that? Because it's easier to make um, bigger models with, with a good, good uh, how is it, I should say, with a good quality. Okay. At some point, even a 4K texture will, yeah, result in, in bad um in a bad result if you have a, a very big model for example mm -hmm. uh yeah this library actually looks pretty interesting maybe that'll be that might be a nice little feature uh and it wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't actually have to it could work on a per mesh level so like it doesn't have to it we don't have to like write an importer and an exporter for it we can just probably just feed it some simple mesh data and get back the result and then incorporate that into the existing mesh data. That could be interesting. Yeah. But yeah, good links, guys. If I had a nickel for every game engine that isn't related to id tech that uses a proprietary model format with the file extension model, I'd have five three nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that there's three of them. <laughs> well, this is what we used in in Leadworks, and we have the working FBX exporter that exports something called that exports an older version of this format i mean i could work around that i could like copy the file and rename it automatically but it doesn't really matter um but that that's kind of what i'm thinking what do you guys think about this kind of a approach versus this i think i think it's better because people like a lot of people have been saying, I have an FBX and I can't import it into the engine because the Facebook tool is bad and they don't want to, and Blender is too complicated. So this is, so I think if it could just take an FBX and it works, I think that's a step up. So 
Um, I just want to check. So is the model file format, you said that's pretty much like the specification is going to be open. So then other people could basically, this would kind of solve that problem of uh, people wanting to make their own importers and stuff, right? Um, the file specification, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to read and easy to write. I mean, it's a binary file format, but it has a lot of error checking. Um, yeah, I can like, what I did with, with spider pig is I just sent him my save and load code. Uh, but I don't mind writing like a specification for that describes, uh, the thing I actually have one already in the documentation, but it's mm -hmm. not, there's no page in the table of contents for it. Mm -hmm. We can take a look. Yeah, at that, I just actually. think it's cool that this is at least an option for people because I know like people were talking about plugins and stuff for different file formats at one point. Let's see. I, I don't need it, but yeah. <laughs> I think we can. Let's see. Yeah, this is the page I had. Uh,. So this, okay, the file format. Uh, I was still calling it G3D here, but this should be MDL, null terminate. It starts with a null terminated string that's four bytes, and then it has the version. Um, and then it starts with tag node. This is just four bytes again. Um, an I string, which is uh, basically it's an integer followed by, that indicates the length of the string followed by the string. I think this is a little bit uh, less problem Prone, error prone than a null terminated string. Um, it has engine properties as a JSON string, so that's something you guys don't touch. Then it has user properties as a JSON string, so that's something that you do. That's the properties JSON structure, or I guess it's a, it's, I guess it's a table uh, in in Ultra. Then you have position, rotation, scale, color, um, skeleton, LODs. It supports LODs. Um, and then the meshes, duh, duh, duh. vertex morphs, um, some extra stuff for subdivision for the tessellation, the pick data structure. Um, a little bit of this has changed, but this is pretty close. Animation, the embedded collider, and children for for the node, and so on. And that's pretty much it nice. um in can it be um how easy can it be um there was some discussions about this for models supporting multiple text skins pretty much are you still thinking about doing that in a dds layer like it like the i think it's like the u parameter or do you think it, supporting multiple materials would be better so um uh, definitely uh, using a texture, an array texture. But uh, right. I, this actually talks about materials. MDL does not define a material system, but instead references external material files. A material system is outside the scope of this specification. Material file right. paths. Well I, well, I just didn't know if you wanted to make um, the, the material uh, like a separate array of... But then that'll get complicated with all the sheets, so it's probably better to just tell it what frame, solve two birds with one stone, and just implement a an array texture system where it could be used for animation or skin swapping. So, yes, ex exactly. Um, one small issue with that, just. Um, I mean, this isn't really something you guys have to worry about, but if you use an array texture, um, when you, uh, okay, so you have your U and your, you have your UV chords and then you have your W chord, mm -hmm. which is like Z that's like depth. Um, right. and that indicates which slice of the array texture is being used, which like depth slice. Um, it, the GPU does not do linear interpolation between two slices of an array texture. Um, it does do linear interpolation between, uh, like in a, in a 3d volume texture. Um, 
So we might actually want to prefer to use uh, 3D volume textures for for animations, but uh, yeah, but I mean those are those are fairly trivial details. Yeah, I'd, I'd say like texture array textures are the way to go uh, for supporting multiple skins. And in fact, we might want to make instead of having I might make all of our 2D textures array textures just by default, even if they only have one depth slice. I don't know if there's any negative uh, ramifications for that performance-wise. I would guess probably not. Um, but that's that's my that might be how I solve it. But the DDS format does solve those does uh, support those kinds of images. So uh, yeah, we can do that. I may, I'm surprised you made the like image converter, like image to DDS, a an option. Like I thought that's like I thought DDS is the standard texture format. So why wouldn't we want to convert image files to DDS? No, but you made that like an option, like you could turn it off. Oh, that's that's just um, because um, there there were some problems uh, with with some of the conversions, and I. I think okay, so we're we're getting ready to release O nine five. Um mm -hmm. and I think I want to I wanna make I don't want to make any major changes to the like the pipeline with that. Um if there is any extra stuff like DDS conversion, um then I want it to be disabled by default just so we can have more time to work everything out before um uh before before that goes live. Um Hi. but we did get um see we did get a lot of stuff done on that there was a there's actually like one bug report in here let's see unsolved um the thread here actually uh, uh, crossed off like half the items here um so this was, nice. this was talking about like um, uh, some different things. Uh, the vertex tool is one thing in particular. I remember. Um, uh, where, you, where you can't like select with the vertex tool, and then you can't, and then when you go to like two D, when you when you want to scale something in two D, and you're in scale mode, the entire brush is not like orange because the face is still highlighted. Well, the, okay. The the vertex uh, tool that's that's uh, resolved. Uh, the fix is, was uh -huh. uploaded yesterday. Um, a lot of a lot of little details here. Yeah. Prefabs can be saved. Nice. Here's the. Um, this is what the settings look like. Mm. Um, there's also another bug I'm kind of sitting on my hands on where if you where it, it seems like the prefab is being loaded. Like if you assign a component to a prefab and then load the prefab, the prefab might be spawning the component twice. Um, yeah, is I, that, is that, was, is that Andy's? It was, that was one, no, no, that was one of mine. Um, it's like, a ma I thought it was a mouse issue because. Um, mouse but, lag in prefab. Oh, I thought that yeah. was Andy, but okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It, your 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 reason is more better than mine because I'm putting the mouse in every frame and in normal FPS control you don't do that but I prefer that <clears throat> um, input system because I don't know I just feels I feel like I have more control and it's kind of weird having the mouse like halfway across the screen yeah while you're trying to control it yeah no problem <laughs> well it'll yeah. Uh, things are getting uh, resolved pretty quickly. Let's see. Unsolved. This is what I always do. I just filter it to, and then. Unsolved. Yes. That third page is looking. There's not very many there, so. Yeah, it'll it'll get resolved. All right. Uh. So. Let's see. What there is left to do is um, uh, the mesh layer system. Like I said, like 
I feel very comfortable. I didn't I didn't do any work on it beyond uh, just getting the variations working because at that point I felt very confident that um, that everything was going to work out. Uh, so I decided that's so I decided to turn my attention to some other things. Um, but that's that is still going to be done, and then um, particle system and uh, decals that'll probably just take you know one or two days each. Uh, maybe three days for the particle system, probably one day for the decals. Um, and that's, that's all the major features I can think of. And then, um, you know, of course we want uh, C sharp programming support and I'm starting to think about, uh, I would like a really cool game demo. I think I want it to be like a third person, uh, game with a gun um, cause I th- feel like it's easier to make, uh, something that's like visually impressive in third person view. Cause uh, like in, in first person view, it's just like, it doesn't look as good and, and it just, and it's also hard to get the hands right. Uh, for some reason, no modelers can make hands. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. And I actually had like... Post, posted some ideas along here. Um, uh, oh wait, concepts. Okay, I was thinking of like, you know what SCP is? S- secure, contain, protect. Uh. Um, it, it's a weird uh, thing, but um, apparently, like, uh, one of my programs was used for the world for the map editor for uh the scp game and so um i was starting to think about like a setting it's kind of like it's kind of like um it's kind of like the x files where it's like this science fiction world where there's just all these strange anomalies entities that and you have these teams that go and like basically either shoot them or contain them in these uh, facilities so they can be researched. They're not really aliens. Maybe they are. They're just like weird interdimensional beings and stuff like that. And it's just all these science fiction stories that people make up about them. Um, but this is kind of what I was picturing for the outside setting. I'm thinking like you start off and there's like a tr- there's like two military transports that have like crashed th- through the, the the gate and then there's a radio going off and they're like you know hey wh- you know where's your team oh you already they already went in and then they're like and you know your commander or whatever is like oh why aren't you with them and he's like oh i got sick i had a bad taco and he's like okay understood well we've lost contact with the team and we need you to uh, go in and then you've got to like First, you've got to find a. There's kind of a sort of a maze of these chain link fences, and you have to like lift a turn, activate a forklift to like raise something up so you can cross like a little bridge between boxes, storage boxes, and then like you have to push a ladder over, and then it bridges like this gap that you have to get over, and then you get to the entrance, and you have to go through like some kind of sewer system or something to get inside the facility. Um. And then once you get inside, it's third person view and you have these like creatures like running at you and attacking you. I think it's mostly like most of this is just going to be defined by like the 3D models that I can get for it. Um, So I'm looking for 3D models for like the main character and for enemies. Yeah, I think something like mutants is, you know, is more uh, versatile than uh, than zombies. Um you can do a little bit more with the uh, with the gameplay there. Um, even in Left 4 Dead, like the zombies were sort of like they took some very creative uh, liberties with uh, with their design and behavior. Uh, this kind of stuff, I think, is is um, is probably like the easiest to do to make to make it look good um, to have a good setting. That's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. So something like SCP Containment Breach or SCP 5K, but in third person. Uh, I haven't played those games, but yeah, 
um, and not using you the... You should in your free time. Huh? You should in your free time. They're really good. Where, can you uh, can you write in the chat that it was uh, SCP Containment Breach and what was the other one? SCP Containment Breach and SCP 5K. 5K? Hold on. Yeah, 5K. Okay. Let me write them down real quick. I don't want to use the SCP uh, name because it's it has to be Creative Commons. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking like Killing Floor, like how the creatures there were. I thought SCP was Creative Commons though. Yeah, but that's why these games exist. Yeah, but if if like I release a demo for my engine, that's um, but it's part of the engine, then I don't think they have like a legal, you know, a le there's no legal team that exists, I think, that can sue me. But um, I just, I don't want any, I, I can call it something else and have basically the same idea and not have any problems at all. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Like your, I think your game has to be open source and free, which is fine for the, for the demo itself, but uh, not for the engine, of course. I'm interested to see like how like your component um, philosophy, like how everything's gonna be modular and everything, because modular components is actually kind of tricky. Uh, like for what? Well, like you said, you want to like to climb a ladder and you want to like to move things, and and that's great if everything's like if 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 everything is built into player, that's great. But let's say you want a player that doesn't have the ability to climb a ladder because you know instead you can just ha take a box but perhaps if they just don't want that functionality in the code ever in my opinion like um people don't want uh to make add components and stuff they just they don't want to they they just want something that works so right. like a while back, we were talking about like, oh, a, you know, if you're using the component system, your your player should be split into a bunch of different like subsystems, and it's like I, yeah, I don't really, I don't, I, I don't really think yeah. that I don't really see that. I think it just makes things super complicated for no reason, and nobody like nobody cares about it. Yeah, I mean, from my from how I'm looked at it, like components are great, like in code, because you can be like. Oh, I need something to happen, but I want to hook onto like the entity because, you know, I need its collision hook, or I need its update hook, or I need its whatever hook. Um, in Legworks, you can only do that w once, right? Because in in, in um, on top of the actor, because you you have the actor, and then you also have the the hooks that've been there since like forever, that are undocumented. And then you can use those because I did that with Cyclone. I used those hooks for like the box impact sounds. So the boxes are not actors themselves. They're just normal entities with a hook attached to them. But in Ultra Engine, you can, you can manage, you can add multiple of those and you can manage them. So yeah, I think, I th I think it's good to have the multiple components. I just, I don't, but it's like the usage of that is is pretty limited like the most i could see is like having a separate like health manager uh kind of component system that that could be right. good because that can be reused like in a, a separate ammo system or something but like trying to piece together like different cameras like trying to piece together your camera from like different uh right components i think at that point that you're just making something you're just making things unnecessarily difficult all right i mean it's doable i tried it it's just there's a lot of cross-referencing and yeah so. mm -hmm. so um what so um yeah, if you guys have any ideas or if you come across any 3D models, especially if they're like public domain, um, especially, um, then, you know, feel free to post uh, post links to those and I'll take a look. Yeah. 
So are Mixamos, uh, are their models all, all free to use or what's? Yes. Okay. Because some of those looked pretty good. They are all free. Also the animations. Are they all human or do they have monsters? And you have, they also have monsters. You can check it out. Uh, you can see the character. Uh, you don't need to log in. You need only an Adobe account to download them. Okay. All right. They I'll got take... really cool monsters. Okay, cool. I like monsters. Um, a question I thought of last week. Does the language translation system still a thing? Because I remember that was like in like the early days. But it hasn't been like talked about since. Like when I was talking about making like a translation layer to to like yeah. convert lead word. No, no. Okay, because I made my own system. I kind of, I just took what source data I used. Key, I used um, tokens, and then it looks up the token, and then based on what language you have selected, it will load a script for that language and use. The, to the token um, values like so I'll probably make an ultra engine version of that and release it Cause that's been a while it's just something like I thought of like it's like doesn't like ultra engine like support that well there's yeah there's there's a few different things that um it's like you try it and it's like you maybe it's a good idea and then you find out some of those things turn out to be a really good idea and some of them are just like people aren't really that interested well i think um i think when you worry about when you think about accessibility like some, i worry about accessibility a lot and I think about like language support i think about hearing impaired visual impairment um and that all goes into like the design of your game because you're like, all right, if I don't have a translation system or a closed caption system, um, my game cannot have voiceovers because, you know, even if they're not an English speaker, they might not be able to hear properly or so. But I know like a closed caption system will be like, out of the scope of the engine, that's more the end user's job because that includes rendering to the UI. So. I guess the only thing I would, when you get to the, to adding the sound, when you get to um, revamping the sound side of things, I guess an event that I'll play every time a sound is played, that might be a little bit too much, but at least you can be like, hey, if this sound plays, then this hmm. is a dialogue. And then you can be like, okay, what does this say? And then you can have a young translation, whatever, like my token system, whatever. You'd probably want to have then, like an underlying, whatever underlying system is controlling when that happens would launch the sound and display the text at the same time. Yeah, I mean, that's what I do because I have access to the, sort to the sound source. So I actually made a layer on top of the sound system. And then every time that speaker class plays it emits an event and then the idea was that then you can use that information because my speaker system loads a script so mm -hmm. you can describe like how loud it is the range um the pitch the sound files you know you can load multiple sound files if it's random so if you want to have, like multiple sound files you can just like footstep sounds it, it would still be considered one entry but it could play randomly and yeah. I also added um, a field for closed captioning. So even if it's just a sound effect, um, you can put that there. Or if it's dialogue, you, it, you know, you can write what the person's actually saying. So, but that's top. That's more of game layer than engine layer. Yeah, we might actually be able to get some of those SCP. Like, I don't know, like. Again, I haven't like really played the games, but um, I played one of them, I think. But um, we might be able to get some of their map designers interested if their maps are any good. Look up trash can useful. I think again, 
this 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 terrain thing with the smoothing would be important also as one of the next features otherwise if you can create the terrain and can yeah add trees and all the stuff but yeah if you are not able to control the height of the terrain to make a flat surface it's getting really hard yeah yeah it'll it'll uh, it'll it'll get in there I mean, I, I I don't know exactly when, but um, you know things are things are going pretty fast now. You have a target date for the next release, or when it's done for oh nine five, or yeah. Uh, well, I'd like to um, solve whatever I can easily solve uh, within the next week, maybe, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe. Maybe Thursday or so. Maybe we can put 095 onto the default branch and then uh, start. And then that'll also be good because it's been a while since we've had a stable release. Um, and I, I like people to be able to switch back to the stable branch if they have any temporary problems. Um, and we can't really do that right now because the stable branch is using Vulkan and the development branch is using OpenGL. Right. So that'll be nice to, it's like, it'll be nice to get it out, but I also like whatever I can, it'll, that'll probably be the stable build for, you know, for about a month, um, maybe three or four weeks. So whatever I can get into it, um, easily before, before it gets released would be good to, to do now. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. I didn't see sharp support. Oh, sorry. You were saying. Oh, uh, no, no, I, I, just, I just said, like, yeah. All right. Uh, I think C-sharp support is still on the roadmap, right? Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, I would guess that probably, like, six months from now, I, I would guess that probably 90% of people using Ultra will be using C-sharp. I would not be surprised. I just wanted to... I just want to ask, is C-sharp going to be a part of the Pro Edition or just the regular edition? Uh, what I would probably do is include it in the pro version and then also maybe come out with another, add another version, um, and call it like ultra engine.net or something. Uh, crap. I think I put the wrong build up on steam on the, it's on the beta branch though. So it's. Errors are acceptable. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, trash can useful. Actually, I only did that just so I could get you to join Discord, to join our server. Now you're here. It has served its purpose. So my plan has right. has worked. I mean, you eventually have to fix like the server issue eventually. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. So, uh, anything else? Um, no, I've been meaning to post about something for a while. I, I just haven't gotten to writing it. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you guys have enjoyed the rest of your weekend. Uh, thank you for joining, and yep. I'll I'll have uh, the video uploaded uh, in a in an hour or so, and I'll post the slides uh, on our on our forum too. Okay. All right. Have a good one. Yep. Bye bye. bye.